This is Mark with Metal Tech 4x4. We are in the shop installing a Goblin front bumper on a GX470. This happens to be a 2003 in silver, um, very first year of the 470. Uh, and this one is a little unique. It's actually one of the first trucks that we actually scanned years ago uh, that we did the development on uh, for sliders and for front bumpers. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's come back in the shop. Uh, she's wearing sliders, got a lift but we're gonna put a Goblin Stage 3 on this, on this truck. And so this is gonna be a, a install guide on how to put a Goblin Stage 3 on a GX470. Now it'll work with a Goblin Stage 1 or 2 as well, um, but this is straightforward and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Taking the, the, the factory skin off, it's pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of these little um, screws that are in the base that we're gonna go ahead and blow these things all out, take them all out, and it'll help speed up what we're doing. So we're going to pull all the fasteners from the uh, clear plastic or from the plastic front bumper. Once we do that, uh, we got a bunch across the bottom and we got one on its, each side in the wheel wells. Um, and that is it. And then from there, we're going to go from above, release the few that are just behind when we open up the front grill. And that's going to allow us to grab this piece of plastic and take it off. Now, when we take this off, the plastic does have the factory fog lights. A lot of people don't realize that these actually are considered fog lights. They're dim as can be. We never really see them, but there will be an electrical connection to connect to those that we'll have to undo when we take the plastic off. But uh, let's go ahead and take it apart. Not common to find them with all of the uh, plastics still. So we're gonna go ahead and take these plastics off. Just take these pieces out. You just reach in and pop up that clip. They pop right out. Once that's off, now we can see the factory clips. Those are the real ones. And these, to get them up, you just come in on the sides and you just get this middle to pop up. Once the middle pops up, the whole thing comes out. To put them back in, you put them in, you push down, they lock in place. So you just want to pop that center out and they pop right out. To pull the bumper off the truck, you're just going to grab it from the side once the fasteners are removed. And you're just going to just start popping it out and it's going to start coming off the truck. The whole thing will. Um, like I said, be aware there's plastic down below that's in place that we're going to have to get released. So as I pull this away, I can see inside now and I can see my electrical connection for the factory fog lights. It's right here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to undo that clip. And once that clip's undone, I'll do the other side and then this whole front piece will just come right off the truck. Same thing on this side. I'm going to grab it in the wheel well, yank outward. There it is. Foam, very important. Okay, so we got the crash bar. This is what the real bumper is on your truck. That's actually a legitimate bumper. We're gonna take the crash bar off and then we'll start putting our bumper on. And take the crash bar off. You just have these four bolts that are on the frame. And when you take those four bolts off each side, the crash bar will come off. Now, you won't, don't be surprised if you find these things on there really tight. So you may have to put some good effort into it to get them off. Um, but just put a little breaker on a bar on them and pop them off, they come off. All right, so if you're using an impact gun to take it apart, here's a little trick you can do. This piece is actually bolted to these pieces. So this piece is bolted to here and there's just two bolts that hold it on. And so if you're using an impact gun, and they're loose, they're not rusted, go ahead and just pull those off and that allows you to put an extension back to take these bolts out. All these hex heads on these, on these nuts are uh, 14 millimeter. So 14 millimeter deep socket um, on an impact here, here, and then an extension will take all this apart really quickly. And that's what, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm breaking them free first. Now I'll use the impact. Comes right off. We're gonna save those nuts because we're gonna use them on the install. All right, so this lower bar that goes across the front of the headlights here, um, we're gonna take this off 
and we're mainly just opening up so that there's probably clearance for the bumper in the front. So at this point, uh, this is ready for us to go ahead and start installing the, uh, the winch mount, the bumper at this point. So the truck is torn down, um, wheel wells are hanging down. We're gonna control trim these after we have the entire installation done. Um, so the process of putting the winch mount on, we're gonna literally slide the winch mount on. And then from the sides of the truck, there is an existing um, bolt hole that's here. And we're gonna be drilling those out we're gonna drill that out for half inch. So the hole's already there, so we're gonna take this nut out, or this bolt out. We'll drill it out for half inch, and then we're gonna be adding a, an additional brace that's gonna use that as a pickup point to give extra strength to the bumper winch mount. So at this point, I can go ahead and drill these out uh, with my half inch drill bit, uh, getting ready for the additional reinforcement bolt to go in there. Right there. All right, so I'm gonna be drilling this hole out and this uh, AC dryer, uh, I think actually it's a power steering cooling line, um, has a little bracket that goes there. We're gonna drill the bracket out too. And so I threw a clamp on there so I can drill them both at the same time. You can do them separately, but you can also take the, the, the uh, bracket off and drill it off on a table if you have, if you wish to do that, cause it's just on bolts. But I'm gonna clamp it on there, drill it in one shot and I'll do the other side. So I'm gonna reach inside with a cold chisel and there's a, the frame nut that's in there that we just drilled out. And we're gonna remove that just with a cold chisel, just knock it off. And uh, that's gonna leave a nice clean space for us to put our half inch bolt through with a washer and a nut inside the frame. Just a cold chisel and a hammer. Nice and clean. Okay, as a good little installer, I drilled a hole through the frame it was an existing hole. I just enlarged it. Uh, so, um, but of course we have raw steel there and anytime you have raw steel, you want to seal it up. So we're going to do our installer trick of fingernail polish and I'm going to put paint on all of the raw steel that's exposed. If you want to see more on using the fingernail polish trick, uh, we have a separate video talking about using fingernail polish and so some other areas we've used it for. All right, so we're gonna put this on as a side plate there left and right. We want the little flange sticking out to the side. And this is gonna give us reinforcement for our winch mount, so we're pulling off the main structure of the, of the bumper. So we're gonna use our metric 12 millimeter bolts, and those are gonna go into the existing threaded holes that your truck already has with it. And then we're gonna put a half inch bolt through the top here, through that half inch hole that we added. And then we're going to reach inside and put a lock, put a washer, lock washer, and then a nut in there. And fortunately, this hole's pretty good size. It's not that difficult to do. Um, you just kind of, kind of to, you know, make your finger kind of small and, and tuck it in there. But it will, it, it's not impossible to do. I could just put the washer on. I'll go ahead and put the lock washer on. And lock washer's on. So now I just got to put the nut on. And I'll do a tape trick for the nut, and I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to take my wrench, and I'm going to take a piece of tape, and on the back side of my wrench, I'm going to put tape. And on the front side of my wrench, I'm going to put our nut, and it's taped now to the wrench. Doesn't fall off, and it's easy to go. Now I can easily stick this in and turn the nut to put or turn the bolt, excuse me, to put the nut onto the threads. And then the nut will just take itself right off the tape. It's still a little loose, so I can come back and make a small adjustment to it later. So this is on, I did tighten it down a little bit more. I can loosen this up if I need to for alignment but this is in line for our winch mount. And uh, you just do the same thing to the other side. Arm curl curls here. 
Was that too fast? Okay, so winch mount is on the truck. Now we've slotted the winch mount uh, back and forth and that allows you to actually adjust your bumper left and right on your truck for fit. So you have a, a range of motion for adjustment. So if you need to move your, your, your bumper on your truck from left to right a little bit, you don't do it at the bumper shell, you do it down at the winch mount. So you would just loosen the bolts on the winch mount and you'll be able to slide the bumper left and right by about uh, 16th of an inch, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch adjustment back and forth on either side. So it just gives you some adjustability. I got just a safety nut on it right now, holding it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the 3816 um, grade eight bolts that are gonna go through the lower section like this. And then we'll put a, a washer, a lock washer and nut on every single one of them. Now I'm facing them this way, just because it matches the other bolts. You could, they could face the other way. It doesn't really matter. Um, but either way it works just fine. Do, do, do. Putting the flange nuts back on. The frame flange nuts. Flange nuts. They have the great big flanges on them. Cool. One thing you're going to notice, I got the bumper kind of in a neutral position. So it's split evenly from either side. That's how I'm going to initially put the bumper on that I'll be able to make any small adjustments if I need to. It's not uncommon for our trucks bodies to be sitting slightly different on the frames because they're on rubber mounts and so the bodies do float on the frame so we're now putting something from the frame directly in line with the body and it's really quick to see that maybe there's a slight deviation of the body sitting off on the frame a little bit that's not uncommon it's not bad that's just how they work when you have a big plastic bumper you never see it but when we put a steel bumper on you can see it very quickly so it's nothing wrong with the truck it's just how they are and that's why you build adjustments adjustability into it The winch mount is now on. Um, this winch mount actually is 100% independent to the frame. So we could actually put the winch on now and then you could even use the winch. That's how strong this mount is just by itself. It does not need the bumper shell on it for the winch to work. Um, winch can be bolted right on and off you go. Now, if you're putting a winch on, you're gonna have to be careful of the AC dryer lines. This is an AC dryer line here. And then of course it tucks around down here and it gets close to this bar right here. That area right there, you want to make sure that you've got a good distance away from for vibration from the body moving. And right now, that is not enough room. That's about an eighth, about a quarter of an inch. We want to make that a little bit bigger. These AC dry lines are actually really relatively soft. You can bend them with your hand. So just use your hand. Don't use a tool because we don't want to crimp it. Uh, we just want to give it some clearance. And then we would do the same thing if a winch was sitting here and this line is getting ready to hit the winch. We would grab the line and just bend it back carefully to help clear the winch. Now it, clears, now it would clear the winch. So this installation, um, the customers opted to not go with a winch at this time. So we're gonna continue on with the install without putting a winch in. But this would be the time that you would install your winch. It's perfect. You could sit on a bucket on your driveway, take your time to bolt it up, take your time to run your wiring. The winch is 100% independent of the bumper shell itself, except for the lead going through the bumper shell center. But uh, I'm gonna bend this out of the way a little bit to create a little more clearance. Most of our trucks, we're going to go ahead and uh, when the winch does get put in on the Goblin, almost every Goblin, you're going to have to mount the winch solenoid system remotely. And I mounted up past the battery is where I always put it. And just use extension battery cables, uh, extension battery, uh, battery cables extensions that you can get at your local hardware store to make extensions for your, for your winch. Otherwise, you can also custom make your leads if you have the equipment to do that. Um, but know that most winch installations, the solenoid box is going to have to be mounted under the hood just because it's such a tight space inside the Goblin bumper. It's, it, we, we don't want to make the bumper gigantic just to clear that winch solenoid because uh, it's actually better for the winch to keep the solenoid under the hood because it's actually warm and drier under the hood. And uh, the warmth, of course, will keep the box from getting condensation and, and having problems. Whereas it, when they're outside the vehicle, you always run the risk of moisture getting inside your solenoid box, which is a bad thing. So it's actually a good thing to mount them under the hood anyway. So we went ahead and made the design to make the bumper as compact and fitting of the truck as possible. Therefore, the solenoid boxes typically have to get remote mounted. But now that we've got our AC line cleared, we've verified that our winch mount is on 100%. All of our bolts are nice and tight. Everything's put in place. We threw the torque winch on it real quick, hit the torques. We'll throw the torque settings up on the screen. 
Um, now we're gonna, before we put the bumper shell on, uh, we're gonna put the stone guard on. And the stone guard is really just a small guard to keep small sticks of debris from coming up. Uh, the winch mount, of course, has this extremely strong lower core support. This is a, just a massive, beefy lower core support, which protects the front of your truck for hitting obstacles head on to your radiator. Then, of course, you have the twin tubes that the winch mount's actually built out of. So this whole frontal protection area is ridiculously strong. So the stone guard is really just there to keep small debris and so forth off the truck. And the stone guard goes on just like this, and it bolts up on like this. That's exactly where it goes. So we're gonna be putting bolts through these tabs here, through these holes, and then these ears are gonna go through bolts that are up here on the sides. And that's it, it's really easy to do. This is a stage two, or stage three actually, so it has the fog lights as well as the light bar. Uh, the factory fog light wiring is this little guy right here. And we could adapt this to use the Deutsch Tech connector. So when you get the lights from Metal Tech, if you, if you get the stage two or stage three, the outpost off-road lights come with really nice Deutsch Tech connectors on them. And most people don't have the plug for that. So we actually just include them for you at no charge. So we're gonna go ahead and adapt these on. And all we're gonna be doing is cutting the factory ones off. And then we're gonna use the factory wiring to wire this on. Now, LED lights are specific for polarity. So in other words, you can't mix your positive and your negatives you can't mix your positive and negatives. You gotta get them right. So uh, what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna pull this loom out a little bit. Give me some extra clearance. I'm gonna put the loom back. Um, so Toyota uses white with a black stripe as ground, and then other colors are gonna be other polarities. This one is gonna be green, and that's gonna be the running light or the fog lights. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this adapter directly on. I'm going to leave a nice amount of length to it. That's going to make it easier for future installation and disconnection. But this is on a quick connect, so it's a Deutsch Tech, so we can actually take it off really quickly from the fog lights if we ever need to take the bumper off for any reason. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on. I'm going to use crimp connectors, and then I'll go ahead and wrap them with electrical tape to offset um, to help keep them from moisture and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and put those on, and this will be pretty good at that point. So one thing that I've just done is I've actually cut these at different lengths. So the, the positive is shorter than the ground. And then on the truck, the positive is longer than the ground. And the reason for that is that when we put these together and we have those connectors on there, they're not two gigantic, gigantic connectors bulbing out next to each other. One's gonna be in line with the other one. And it'll be really easy when I tape it up, it'll just like a little tube, one consistent tube versus a big knot of, of electrical connections. All right, so I'll prep the ends and we'll crimp them on. Now they're nice in line, we'll wrap them with some tape. All right, so now we have our connector ready to go. I threw some loom on it just to protect it, make it a little, little, uh, little tidier on the, on the truck. Uh, everything's all tightened up inside with the electrical tape and we have the loom on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. These tabs, we no longer need. They stick out and they'll kind of start to hit the, hit the, uh, our, our bumper. So we're just gonna take them and just bend them inward. Just a small amount, that's all we need and we're good. This front part here, these are in the way. So I'm gonna use a trimming device and I'm just gonna trim those off like that. Just observation. Bumper shell, we just slid it onto the winch mount. And then on the inside of the winch mount are the overall, the front slots. And on those slots, we're gonna put two bolts that are gonna come in on each side. And then we're gonna put the nuts on. And once we have them on there, we're gonna snug them up. So there's the two bolts that are right through this, this window here that you can see. And then there's the two bolts on the other side. 
And once those are on, we're gonna snug them up and then we're gonna start doing alignment on the bumper shell. So we can actually tip the bumper shell forward. We can tip it back. Um, as we talked about before with the winch mount, we can move left to right by loosening the winch mount for alignment. Right now, I'm trying to get a nice fit or good balance of how the bumper's sitting on the truck in lines to the body and to the lights. And we're pretty close to where it needs to be. And then once we have it lined up, there's gonna be, there's a third hole in the bumper shell, but not in the winch mount. And that third hole is right behind where those two bolts are. And that third hole, we're gonna come in with a, with a uh, Foreman's paint pen, uh, any paint marker actually, or Sharpie that's colored or whatever. And we're gonna mark that hole from the inside. And what we're doing there is we're going through that large pull point that's on the other side back here. Um, and we're putting the mark where that hole needs to be. And once we have where that hole needs to be, we'll take the bumper off the, sh off the frame, uh, off the winch mount. And then we're gonna come in with a drill and we're gonna pilot drill that hole. And then we're gonna come in from the other side and we're gonna then finish the hole up to a half inch for the half inch bolt to be the locking bolt. And the locking bolts are what's setting our position for where the, how the bumper's sitting on the truck. So we're at that point, we're just gonna move it around a little bit, get our final alignment. Once we know where our, num our numbers are gonna be, we're gonna go ahead and mark those spots on the, fr on the frame, pull the shell and drill it. And then we'll be able to throw it back on again and then it's actually done at that point. So let's mark, go ahead and mark it at this point. And do the other side. Clear. So we're gonna drill a half inch hole on the mark that we made. That's our locking pole that we need to put in. A little awkward to take a drill and drill in from this side. Besides, anytime you drill a hole, you always wanna step up, start small and work your way up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pilot hole. First, I'm gonna use a center punch. I'm gonna ID where my center of my hole is. Give myself a nice center punch mark to be drilling from. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill from the inside with a, with a pilot hole drill, and then it will be very easy for me to come in from the outside with a half inch and finish the hole, or step the hole up with another size. So first, let's go ahead and punch this hole through. So hey, if you like what we, uh, we're doing here at Metal Tech, uh, you know, like our, like the, uh, the videos and subscribe uh, to get notifications we make more. And that also helps us, encourages us to keep making more content for everybody. So we appreciate that, it makes a difference. Move my hand just right, <laughs> right nick of time there. Whoa, whoa. Almost got, up. yeah, I almost got chomped. We're gonna go ahead and plug our fog lights in. And then I'll go ahead and use some zip ties and tuck these up behind inside the truck. So the wheel well liner, uh, just a plastic liner, uh, we're gonna cut it, put a mark on here so you can see the general idea where we're cutting. Doesn't need to be super precision, it's hidden behind the bumper. But one of the key things that we're gonna do is once we cut it, we are gonna be uh, using a zip tie and, and anchoring it up against the body. Now there's a nice little hole in the body, in this upper area here, that we're able to put a zip tie through and that's gonna help hold this in place. Wind pressure going down the road is gonna be hitting this and uh, if it comes loose, it'll flip back into the tire and it will sound like you just ran over something massive. Uh, it'll scare the crap out of you when you're driving the truck. Uh, if it's just the wheel liner, nothing's getting hurt. It's easy to fix, put another zip tie in it, you're good to go. Um, you can always put a bolt in there. I've seen a couple of guys do that. I run the zip ties in there because I am moving things around on my truck quite a bit. Um, and I don't have a problem once it's anchored correctly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. We'll put a zip tie in that one part and this side will be done. I'll do the other side. Let's go ahead and cut this though. So 
So our winch fairly would bolt on right here and the bolts would go through, but this truck doesn't have a winch. So we're gonna put this on and it's the license plate holding mount. So the license plate mount is this bracket and it gets sandwiched between your fair lead and the bumper. And since this truck doesn't have a fair lead, we just have some bolts in there. The bracket you're gonna notice has a U-shaped piece and then the slotted area. And what that's for is that we're able to put the license plate on one side with regular nuts and then the other side is gonna have a wing nut on it that we can loosen easily. And when you loosen the wing nut, it allows you to spick, flip this up, which then exposes the fairly for recovery. And then when you're not needing it, just driving around, you flip that down and put the wing nut back on again. So it just hides your winch fairly is what it does. And it puts the license plate in the very center of your bumper.